Hello spring and hello everybody and welcome to my video. So today's video is part of the hello spring open playlist and it's hosted by Tammy from the Rusty Willow, Ellie from DIY from House to Home, and the guest host this month is Fabby with Creations by Fabby. Of course, I'll have a link to their channels as well as to the playlist in the description box below. You guys know where it always is, so be sure and check it out so you can get some great inspiration. <laughs> so we're gonna good. we're gonna go ahead and get into today's video because Socks is now joining us, and here comes Neo, and we we don't need all that. So let's get the video going. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa, and this is our gray house. All right, y'all, I'm headed to Hobby Lobby because I like to walk around and see what they've got, get some inspo from them. And when I was in the floral section, I saw this, I guess, spray of, I, I'm not, a, I'm not even sure what to call it. But anyways, it's like, it reminds me of when trees start to bud in the spring. And I thought it was really pretty, but it was um, $7.99, even 40% off. I was like, mm, I could maybe do better. So I headed to Dollar Tree of course. <laughs> and at Dollar Tree, I found these um, paper flowers. And I had this branch here. Yep. Know what's going to happen now. I took some green felt and I was trying to think like to attach the little paper flower to the tree branch. It's, it's not just going to stay like with a little hot glue. I think that would just come off too easy. So I was trying to think of a way to make a backing for it. So I cut off a strip and then I was going to cut smaller pieces to kind of use it as a backing. And you'll kind of see what I'm talking about in just a moment. But first we got Neo. I mean, he, y'all, he's all, all up in my business. It's like, hey mom, hey mom, look, look. Here mom, I'll hold it for you. Here mom, I'll grab it for you. Uh, yes, that's the, the voice that we narrate whenever Neo does something. Oh, I'm going to get it again. So anyways, I had, oh, now Socks is going to get involved. <laughs> but anyway, I needed several strips of it because I had quite a few flowers and I wasn't sure exactly how many I was going to use, but I wanted a several strips already cut so I didn't have to worry about cutting it midstream of creating this little spring tree branch thing. So again, these flowers are just paper flowers from Dollar Tree. And I got them in pink and then the, the multicolored, uh, multicolored pink and I got them in white. So you can see I'm gluing it there, but then I'm taking a little piece of the felt that I cut off and using it as a kind of a brace backing type situation. And there's not really any rhyme or reason as to where I'm placing the flowers. I mean, as far as like color goes, I'm just, placing them on the tips of branches and then also just little parts that are sticking out. I will place them there as well. And I just put a little dot of glue on the paper flower and hold it there for a second, cut off a little bit of the felt and use that again as a brace. And I kind of squeeze it around the branch so it touches the flower and hopefully stays on better. The original idea was to change from this to this, but I don't know if you noticed, it's a different container. The original container was a glass vase and somebody, I think Neo, got up there and knocked it down and it shattered everywhere in the foyer. It was an awful mess. So I don't think I'm going to put it up there because I think that's going to be too much of a temptation. So I'm gonna th I think I'm going to put it outside, but I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to put it. But I like how it turned out because it just looks like little flowers are budding on the, on the branch. For the next project, I'm getting some caulk, but don't get this kind. Because this is the kind that goes in the gun. Don't get that kind. Get the kind on the left there that I didn't get. You'll thank me later because it's really hard to get it out of the container if you don't get the right kind. But I had this cutting board that I got from Dollar Tree and a scrap piece of fencing material that, you know, guys, I have a lot of it still. <laughs> but I'm tracing out the shape because I'm going to change it from this to this. And, yeah, I'm getting, I, I don't know, I'm getting really happy on those um, snap transitions, but... I had this stencil from Walmart, I believe, and I'm going to put this on the piece of wood. And then I'm going to use that caulk to, um, oh, I'm going to tape it down, kind of keep it steady, Freddy. And then we're going to try to squeeze up because again, I didn't have the gun to do it. 
you know, the can like the little thing doohickey to make it squeeze out. So now, squeeze, and then I'm trying to push something. I did. I thought well, maybe the hole needs to be bigger or something. And then I'm trying to put like a screwdriver in the bottom, like there where my thumb was, to try to push it down. It wasn't coming. Finally, finally, y'all, I got some to come out, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is becoming more of a deal. Then I took my little spatula scraper tool doohickey that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm just spreading it across trying to make an even-ish coat. Then after I got an even-ish coat I'm gonna um you know I'm just going back and forth with it just trying to be even with it then just lift it up and there you go and I actually really like the color of the wood and I kind of wish I had stained it, but it, I didn't. I like the color of the wood with the, the white, the pop of white. I really like that. If I did this project again, though, I definitely would use um, joint compound or something or, you know, the the other stuff that you can get from Dollar Tree. Because this, this was still kind of flexible, like not super hard, you know, when it was done. But then I took these crates from the Dollar Tree. And y'all, the sizing on the crates... <laughs> Just make sure you measure the crate size before you, you know, get started on your project and all that kind of stuff. So I needed to, I was putting them like that to make a little caddy. If you can't guess what I'm making, I'm making a caddy. And then I just use some wood glue and I'm going to glue them all together. And I'm going to use some of those clamps that I got from Dollar Tree to kind of hold them steady. And then when it's dry, I'll let it dry overnight just to be sure it was ready to go. I took some Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant and then I gave it a, I, I wouldn't say, I, I used some water to, to, as you can see, I used some water to kind of dilute it a little bit and make it not so much of a stain, but just thinned it out a bit. And then I painted all over it. And I'm not trying to be super high coverage with it. So if I miss some spots, I might go back and get them, but I'm, I'm also trying to wipe some of it off because I want it to look aged. I want it to look vintage. And I do also paint the inside and actually I didn't paint the bottom. <laughs> I guess I need to go back and do that. But I did paint the inside of each of the cubbies as well. And while that is drying, I'm going to be painting the two ends that look like cutting boards because they are kind of cutting board shape because I used a cutting board as the template. <laughs> but I am and I'm leaving a little bit of a space there. As you can tell, I didn't paint all the way. I will paint all the way uh, all over this side because this is the side that's going to be facing outward. That little space that I left is so that I can glue the little crates to the um, to the sides. And I'm painting all over that little motif thing that I put on there. And I do have that dowel there that you see. I did paint that as well. And now I'm trying to put it all together. And I needed a better plan for this because it just, it the crates weren't the same size, as you can tell, as the <laughs> cutting board shape that I cut out. I thought they were the same size, they're not. And then I was trying to figure out how to attach the dowels. Did I want to cut a hole? Do I just want to like glue it and kind of fake that it goes all the way through? I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do. So just kind of figuring that out. And I end up not cutting a hole in the sides, but I'm just going to cut the dowel to fit snug inside. So now I'm using some wood glue and I think I put add a little bit of hot glue at the bottom just for kind of more of an immediate hold. I'm going to put some on the dowel, but I'm not going to do the dowel just yet. That's going to wait for just a second. And do I put any... Did you use enough wood glue, Lisa? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here I'm putting just a little bit of hot glue on the bottom for an immediate hold. And then I'm going to do the other side the same way. I was on the struggle bus for a little bit <laughs> with this dowel because I didn't even notch it out to know where to exactly put it. And it's not 100% level. I don't care as much about that. I mean, I do care, but I don't, you know, see it kept falling down and I'm like, oh my gosh, like what the heck? And then the sides weren't staying up because those needed to set up, but then I didn't want them to be too firm because then the, the dowel wouldn't stay. So I finally got the dowel to stay because I used a little bit of hot glue for the immediate hold. And then I took the biggest rubber band that I could find in my little stash there. And I used the rubber band to kind of hold everything together while it dried. And that seemed to work pretty good. I took some Waverly chalk paint in the color Celery. And I'm going to do a dry brush coat over the entire... Oh, hello, Neo. 
Um, Neo is very curious. <laughs> he is a kitten, but he is very curious, more curious than the other cats. But before I do the dry brushing, I am going to add on some little half beads so that it can look like those were the end of the dowels, kind of like faking it, you know, fake it till you make it. No. I'm going to put those on the end. So it looks like the dowel goes all the way through, but you got to give some little cat scratches in the meantime. Okay, we've got that done. <laughs> now I'm taking my chippy brush and just dry brushing on again. I am covering, but I'm not going for full coverage. I really do want the elephant gray to show through. I want this to look aged, vintage, you know, like something you'd find in an old barn somewhere maybe. Um, you know, that kind of look. But, and this is the best way I'm thinking to create it. And yes, I, I paint everything with the celery color. I even paint those little fake dowel half beads on the end and as you can see I'm covering up that motif and I'm just using the um, I'm not, again I'm not trying to be too detailed with it I'm not trying to get in all the crevices I want it to look aged and vintage so you can kind of see how the motif looks before I paint it and then you can kind of see how it's looking after I have painted it so yeah, it's, it's looking exactly like I want. Now I'm just taking a piece, a uh, little piece of sandpaper and trying to, oh no, you know what I'm doing here? I'm taking some Waverly wax in the color antique and I'm taking a little scrap piece of cloth that I've wet a little bit and I'm just kind of going over the edges just to add another little layer of color to this project. This is how it turned out. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna put inside there but I, I cannot tell you, I absolutely love how this turned out. It turned out just like exactly what I was thinking in my mind. Like the, the motif on the end, it looks aged to me. It looks vintage and it just looks like something you'd find somewhere and go, oh, wow, this is really cool. I just couldn't be happier with the results. Okay, I've got a crafting group on Facebook. It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I'm gonna link it in the description box below. And um, I sure hope you join. And if you do join, feel free to post whatever you're working on. And especially, I would love it if you would post um, some encouraging comments. Sorry, the cat, Neo's there. Um, in encouraging comments on somebody else's post because, um, you know, that just, it's about being a supportive community for each other. It's community over competition. We're all trying to create and, you know, share our <laughs> creative selves. So, sorry, the cat's trying to knock things over. Anyways, okay, let's get back to the video. I got this wood round from the Dollar Tree and I put a piece of tape, painter's tape, and I'm using some Waverly Wax in the color Antique to stain this bottom half. And I paint on the stain and then I take that little scrap piece of cloth that I've dampened, I've wet it, and I wipe off the excess. And there you go, you have a crisp line. I do let this dry before I go to this next step. Well, I'm going to paint the top with white. Waverly chalk paint in the color white. and. So I'm just going to do that. Give it a nice good coat. I do want good coverage on this piece. And that's a nice crisp line. After both sides have dried, I take those off and then I take my favorite color of Waverly chalk paint in the color Adrift. I just really love this color. You know what? I don't even think, I think it's folk art paint. Anyways, it's like my favorite color. Currently I'm obsessed with it. So I'm painting that there. And if you didn't notice those two dots that you see on there, I've off centered this. I mean, I've centered it so I could paint it good, but see how it's not going to be, the colors are going to go diagonal kind of. I kind of like that look. I saw another wreath that had done something similar. And I thought, hey, that turned out pretty cute. I'm going to try that. So I cut out a decal using my Cricut. Yes, you could use stickers from the Dollar Tree. You could use some other rub on transfer or something that you find somewhere else, a stencil perhaps. You could hand letter it. You could do all kinds of things. I used my Cricut. I cut out the decal. I used paper transfer tape so it doesn't pull up any of the paint or wax or anything like that. And now I'm going to make a cute little bow. Am I the best at making bows? No, I'm not. So what I do is I cut some of the ribbon and I fold it into a circle and then I hot glue that. Okay, that's the first step. Then the next step is to cut off a little piece of jute and I'm scrunching these little bow things together and trying to, trying to scrunch them, you know, 
it's not i mean it goes okay and it looks okay at the end but it's just people other people make it look way easier than than my experience then i took a, another piece of ribbon i didn't i just scrunched it in the middle and put that in the back because that's going to be the tails and then i'm trying to like fluff it out a little bit to kind of get an idea how we're looking it's a little offside centered, so one, one little loop thing is bigger than the other side, but you know, you can't really tell, so or at least I don't think you can tell. And then I'm gonna put it in the corner like that because I didn't want it straight, you know, um, straight up in the middle because that's not how the sign goes. Okay, y'all, excuse the grapevine wreath because it does look deader than dead without any greenery added to it. I haven't got to that part yet. I am adding greenery to that thing. But look how this little sign turned out, y'all. I did add some greenery, kind of like in a swag style, I guess. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I used some lamb's ear. I used some other kind of stuff, boxwood. I don't know what that other kind is that I got in there. It turned out so good. I love the colors and I love how it pops off my front door. Thank y'all so much for watching my video today. I really do appreciate the company in the craft space while I craft and create. And um, I've got two cats up here. One just was, yeah, is got, I got cat hair all over my black shirt now. But um, I really do appreciate all of you that like and comment and especially to the, um, those of y'all that have subscribed to my channel. I appreciate the support so much. I can't even tell you how much it means to me. But um, I'm trying to tell you how much it means <laughs> that I feel like words are failing me here. And um, so thank y'all so much. I really do appreciate it. How many times can I say I appreciate it? I don't know. Anyways, if you want to follow me here on YouTube, we're over on like TikTok or Instagram or something like that. My handle is Our Great House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye. The cats are about to get into video. Are you guys going to get into video?